Welcome to part 2 of this tutorial where I bravely retopologize a door. Yes, we're really pushing the limits of 3D modeling here. As you can imagine, the geometry was a little overwhelming, so I'm doing it manually, like a true artisan. Artisan? I start from the middle of the model and work myself outward. I figure it's easier to craft my geometry like this. Snap to face is on because I like my geometry clinging to that high poly like its life depends on it. While I present you this exhilarating process, I can share a few tips. Since we're not using any add-ons and we are using Vanilla Blender, Snap to Face is a must. But if you want to be even more accurate and efficient, use Snap to Nearest Face. Try to work with pods. Quads are faces with four edges, but if you can't always have quads, having triangles is not the end of the world. Avoid elongated, pointy, thin shapes like these because they could create shading errors. Try to have an even distribution of geometry around your model and follow the shape of your sculpt with the low poly as much as you can. And finally, don't overthink it, we're working on a pretty simple static mesh, the geometry is quite forgiving. There's probably a faster way to do this, but do I use it? No. Why? Because I'm allergic to efficiency. And because this door deserves respect. Another thing you can do to help yourself is to slap on a shrink wrap modifier with your high poly as the target object and any geometry you create will wrap around your high poly object. I find this quite therapeutic. There's something really appealing about not thinking about anything and just fiddling with polygons, you know? Just me? In areas like this where I have this door handle, the snap to nearest face and shrink wrap modifier really do come in handy to keep that geometry wrapped around nicely. Then we start the tailoring process. I start adding seams in the least visible and noticeable places where there are corners, sharp edges or material changes. If you want to visualize the stretching of your UVs, go up here to Overlays and check the UV stretch box. If you want to see your selection both in the UV map and in the 3D model, you can check this little box with arrows on it in the top left corner. I unwrap, check to see where the disaster is, add a few more seams to calm down the blender gods and then unwrap again. Until I end up with these calm, blue, nicely packed pieces. Another trick that I have learned to mask an ugly or visible seam is to mark sharp that particular edge because the light contrast between the two faces that create a sharp edge actually mask a seam better than a curved or smooth shaded corner, for example. After this arguably slow and torturous process comes the funnest part of it all, which is the texturing. So, 
if you're still around here see you in part three of this video